Hey y'all, it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. If you're new to the channel, me and my husband live on about 18 acres in the foothills of North Carolina. We grow about 80 to 90% of our own food. Today's video, I'm just gonna kind of bring you along. Happy Mother's Day weekend. It'll be after Mother's Day when you see this, but hope everybody's had a very blessed weekend. My most important work is being a mom. So <clears throat> where we're at today is where our field corn is planted. So Andy's plowing it with the tractor, even though it's a weekend, Mother's Day, stuff's still gotta be done, y'all. This is about a half a mile from us. We bought this land a couple of years ago before everything went crazy. And uh, now we're thankful we did. It was a lot of growed up um, mess right here, just briars and trees and such. and. Andy did an excellent job cleaning this off, and we've turned into yet another place to grow our own food. Yesterday we came up here and we planted a row of watermelons. What are you going to do with it, Jacob? You know, we just have a little thing at our house to, that we sell them at. We back, we back the Tahoe up, and that's like our trade spot. And we eat lunch there, and we and we see how much we sell, and then we get money for it. So we've got sunflowers. If you see these lines here, we've got sunflowers planted here and on the other side of the row. Uh, that way, that. they're kind of acting as a cover crop. The watermelons can run out into. Plus, it'll attract bees to this area here, um, and it's just going to kind of be like a breaker between What's the field corn. That? and the watermelons. You hear me talk a lot about volunteer plants uh, in a lot of my videos. That's plants that have come up on their own, uh, reseeded themselves most of the time. So down here, we've got some volunteer sunflowers that you can see that came back from last year. We're just gonna let them, let them do their thing in amongst the corn. I'm gonna show y'all something else we're doing. So everybody knows corn loves nitrogen. <clears throat> chicken manure is nitrogen. You will burn your stuff up with straight chicken manure if you don't do it just right. We don't know what just right is, but we're experimenting. So <laughs> Andy's gonna put a tarp down in our egg mobile. We're gonna try to catch and utilize some of this chicken poop. I'm going to show y'all our little setup real quick while he's working on that. So right now, yeah, right now the floors are slatted, the poop falls through. Actually, we're having issues, which is our own problem, but we don't move it often, we don't enough. Move it often enough. We move it once a week. It still leaves a dead spot in the grass because it just burns the grass up, especially in the summer. So. This thing is a little too awkward to move more often than that. Um, and we'll work on that hopefully one day. But for right now, we're gonna try to try to utilize this chicken manure just a little bit better. And plus y'all, let me show y'all what I fed my chickens today. Leftover cobbler, some old jelly. Just cleaning out my pantry. Apples and apple cores. I keep a bucket in the house. You can see here, strawberry tops. From my experience, chicken ain't gonna eat what it ain't supposed to eat. I keep a bucket in the house. Food scraps go in the bucket. Sometimes I go to the chicken, sometimes I go to the hogs. So this is their roosting pole. So most of the manure falls down below that because all of them roost on these poles. So we're gonna try it out and just see. 
see how it works and see if we can utilize this manure in a little better way. So here in our yard is our little experiment corn patch that we're gonna be putting the chicken manure on. Andy's already put some by some of this. I put it by all now. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah, if you can see, I don't know how well it'll show up there, but this whole row had it first. And from about here down had it first, and I run out on this little patch. And you can kind of tell the difference, actually. Um, I just put more on this patch right here yesterday, and I just watered it in just now. This one's totally nothing but an experiment. We're going to put nothing but chicken manure on this to see how it makes. I have heard tales of way back in the past people using chicken manure in their garden and stuff but you had to use like just the right amount so you wouldn't burn up your plants so we're gonna see we're gonna we're gonna experiment and see what the right amount is like I said we don't know what that is but people used to do it so we thought we'd try Mama, it. I wanted this rest because it's going one day okay we used to use chicken manure by the tomatoes it looks beautiful baby and that's the one that's been so good. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, we, we used to use the just straight chicken manure by the tomatoes and throw down a wad beside them. And boy, you'd have some dark green tomatoes, but if you ended up putting too much on it, you had a bad problem with blossom, blossom end rot too. It always worked for that. And I mean, corn's a nitrogen lover, so I don't see why it won't work for this. Y'all remember my broody hen? Let's see if she'll let her little surprise out for us. Are they gonna come out? Oh, there's one. <laughs> Here comes another one. show off my berry hill that we call it over here <laughs> down here next to the pig lot for those of you who don't know we got blackberries we got raspberries we got blueberries uh strawberries and we like to call this berry hill over here these are a variety of thornless blackberries i don't know the name of them we actually bought them last year year before last off from a lady off facebook marketplace that lived around here all these beautiful white blooms will be blackberries. I'm going to have them coming out my ears. Hey, piggy piggies. All down through here. So y'all tell me your favorite blackberry recipes in the comments. I'm thinking blackberry jam. I'm going to freeze some for blackberry cobbler. And I don't know what else. I don't usually have, I usually eat wild blackberries. I don't usually have enough, you know, to really make much out of. And we've got runners coming off of them. Strawberries. Got a few little blooms on a few of them, but I'll show you my blueberries over here. I'm gonna have a lot of blueberries too. Can't wait to get a hold to these. Maggie is insistent that we make blueberry jam. Oh, I can't wait. Cannot wait. These are muscadines. And they got little baby muscadines coming all over them. So this spot right here that you're seeing was actually an unusable spot as of two years ago. 
you can see we've utilized it. I'm sure you can't tell how steep this is, but this is on a bank, a hillside that we put pigs on, let them clear it for us. We kept it mulched and we've planted all this on it and it has done wonders, done wonders. And it's just, I'm really excited to have some fresh fruit this year. Don't look like I'm gonna have any peaches or pears, unfortunately. Y'all, fruit trees. wide open uh fruit trees around here anyway they get so excited like one warm day one warm day in february and they're like oh we're gonna bloom we're gonna bloom they bloom they get frostbit it's a vicious cycle like so we rarely get peaches or pears off our trees but i'm really looking forward to the blackberries the blueberries so anyways y'all that wraps up today's video i hope everyone had a blessed blessed mother's day um it has been a wonderful one for me, wonderful weekend. And anyways, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you hadn't already, if you like this kind of stuff. And uh, me and Andy wanna give y'all a homestead tour soon, so maybe we can get around to that. Anyways, I'll talk to y'all on the next one. So y'all, this is hilarious. You remember seeing us put the tarp in the uh, bottom of the chicken coop here? Nobody's wanting to go in there change one little thing about their coop i hope you can see it because it's dark change one little thing about their coop and they're all out here just walking around scared to death to go in there they're going in slowly but um they don't like it they don't like it at all that's uh i was kind of suspicious of that i thought that might happen but uh they're going in so i'm gonna sit down here for a little bit longer and hopefully they all go in but i just had to share this little bit right here because chickens are so funny about that stuff it's amazing to me it's not even blocking the door they're just sitting there looking at it like because they don't know what it is and it's freaking them out but they're going in slowly so hopefully they all go up anyways i just wanted to share that with you here to last little bit y'all have a good one